Hello and welcome to this short video today about common problems to check on a two litre Citroen Relay or Peugeot Boxer engine. And as well as that, I will go through um, things to check if you're thinking about buying one. I'll show you common issues with the vehicle. I will show you the paperwork to look at when buying a used commercial. This can apply to a car as well. So this is the Citroen Relay Luton. However, it's the same engine, it's a two litre Euro 6 engine. It's the same one which goes in these ones here and smaller Citroen Relay and Peugeot boxes as well. So it doesn't matter if it's a Luton or a van, it's the same engine. You've got the same common issues to check for. Now the most important thing before looking at the vehicle, before checking the vehicle, before turning the vehicle on, before test driving the vehicle, is you want to check the history. The paperwork is the most important thing when it comes to looking at a vehicle. And the most important bit of paperwork is the HPI clear certificate. So I'm gonna show you this in just now. So ask the dealer before you go to, even before you go to see the vehicle, can I see a copy of the HPI report? And it will look like this, okay? So you can buy these online for about £20, £30. Um, you can buy it from HBI, you can buy it from Experian. There's many different websites which sell these. I would personally call the dealer up and ask, can I just see a copy of the HPI report? And you can read through this, it should all be clear. Um, if there's any issues, then don't buy the vehicle. Stolen is an obvious one. Um, scrapped, written off, this is very important. There's lots of written off vehicles on the road. They are allowed to be on the road. They will be either category N, which means non-structural damage has occurred, or category S, which is structural damage, which means it's hit the frame of the vehicle. For vans, this is especially important, no outstanding finance. So you want to make sure the vehicle has no finance outstanding. Something to bear in mind is that if it does have finance showing on HPI, that's not necessarily um, it doesn't necessarily mean that finance is actually outstanding. What can happen occasionally, with, with com especially with commercial vehicles, is that the, 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 the finance will be cleared, but the marker will still be on. So it's always worth calling the dealer to see if he can contact the previous owner to c confirm the vehicle has been paid off, and then they can relay this to the finance company. And you can often get it taken off, um, just the marker, it's normally about three or four days so it's always worth if there is an issue with finance always call the dealer and ask him to investigate for you no third party interest very important no mileage issues important imported or exported color changes that's not so important because vehicles do change color um, they do get painted with company logos and wraps and recorded plate changes again vehicles do have private plates on so that's not so important so you want to check this number one thing when buying a vehicle check the hpi now the second problem um, with paperwork and history is you want to see lots and lots of paperwork with the vehicle i actually don't like to see service books because it's very easy for people just to stamp up a service book and as well as that you don't know exactly what's being done when you see a service stamp well is that an oil and filter is that a major service is that a fuel filter done so i would highly recommend buying a vehicle which has got tons of paperwork with it so you can see what's actually been done so previous mot's um, which is always important i'm going to show you these in a second but you want to see there's lots of work which the vehicle has had replaced on it so this is a starter motor in April, a turbo, very important. One of the things I will talk about shortly is the turbo and injector issues which these vehicles suffer from. MOT, so you get the idea uh, that you want to see things have been done on the vehicle, not just a service, but other, other maintenance as well. An injector problem, another common issue on these vehicles make sure the vehicle service is up to date. This one was done in April. With regards to MOTs and advisories, there's lots of sort of questions around this. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to see previous MOTs having advisories if they've been rectified. So we actually bought this van with these outstanding advisories and we've had them all rectified. There was an oil leak, this was from the turbo. We've had a new turbo, tires, brake pads and discs. We've all had these done. It's now got a new MOT with no advisories. So you want to see if there are 
advisories maybe in the last year or two make sure they've been done and make sure the receipts for the work actually being done as well very common um, very important thing to look for so make sure you buy a vehicle with lots of paperwork and make sure you can see a general trend of work being done and if there are any advisories um, that these have been rectified as well you won't always see the receipts for them it's things like brake pads and discs sometimes in the past the receipts will get lost but make sure you see lots of paperwork with the vehicle to back up um, the history of the home so the next thing i will show you I'll turn the vehicle on and i'll go through some common faults with these vehicles so some of the common faults on these vans um, they often have turbo problems so way to check that firstly uh, oil level you can see there that's full if, you, if you're buying a vehicle and it's got hardly any oil in it it's probably burning oil or it might have an oil leak so and the common issues with these is, are the turbos when you rev it really hard you don't want to see any black smoke if you see black smoke you might have a turbo problem Another issue is when you rev it, you don't want to hear a whooshing noise. If you hear a whoosh as you accelerate, maybe through two and three thousand revs RPM, if you hear a whooshing noise, that can be the symptom of a turbo failing. So make sure it sounds like that. That is perfect. Another common problem is injector problems on these vehicles. This has had an injector replaced. The way to check that is how still is the steering wheel now bear in mind it is going to be running the engine so it's going to be moving slightly but it should be deadly still the steering wheel if it, sh if it feels it's shaking a bit like this then you've probably got a problem with an injector or maybe a, a cheaply replaced injector so um, make sure that the steering wheel is deadly still and the engine there's no misfire when you rev it as well if you hear a slight cackle a slight vibration that this is how it should sound. That's perfect. Okay, so turbo injector problems. Also, um, this is an obvious one, but warning lights. They should all come on and off as this. So if you turn it on, you should see all these lights come up. Most importantly, the engine light and oil light. If there's any problem with the engine, you're probably gonna throw up an engine light. Um, so that's something to look for. Make sure they all go on first and then off when the ignition when the engine is started common issue with these as well is add blue problems so if you've got an add blue problem um, it will say on the dashboard you have an add blue fault that's another common issue on these so if you have any warning lights on the vehicle don't buy it make sure these are rectified if you um, before paying any money very very important so finally i'm just going to leave the engine running and show you in the engine bay and other things to check for. So these are the injectors here. You want to make sure there's no fuel leak from here. You want to make sure that it's all, uh, there's no rust around them. That's how one of these engines should sound. Another common thing to check for is oil leaks. So you want to make sure the engine is all completely dry around the top and as well that it is the gearbox all around the middle. Now we have recently had this serviced, um, so as well that's um, something to make sure. Make sure it's had a new oil filter, very important. Now if you have a look under here, just quickly, there is a tiny bit of oil um, just here. But look, that's probably where it hasn't been completely cleaned, where we've had the new turbo fitted. So if you see a little bit of oil, uh, as long as it's not dripping, um, it's not always a, a huge sign of a problem. If it's covered in oil underneath, then that's a very bad sign and something to check for. oil level you can check that by pulling this up here um, that's all good on this so make sure you check that and the coolant level as well so with the engine cold this engine is warm but open it up 
the water level should sit just between the maximum and the minimum here. And make sure that the, the coolant is pink. If it's oily or if it's got fuel in it, that's a very bad sign that there may be you've got a head gasket problem um, and it's mixing oil and water. So it should look like a pink water. Um, shouldn't see any oily mixture in there. The final problem I want to just quickly go through with you are on these vans are gearbox problems. So if we turn the vehicle on, first of all, make sure there's no strange clutch noises. When you engage the clutch, there's no difference in the way the engine sounds. If there's any difference in noises, that's a um, problem should come straight up like that as well. Gearbox, this is the key thing. So make sure when you're test driving it, there's no gearbox whines in fifth or sixth. It's a common problem. So when you engage a gear and you're going along, make sure there's no whirring noises coming from the gearbox and it should sound exactly the same as with it in neutral. If it sounds different and there's a whirring noise, um, then that's normally a gearbox bearing has gone. Something to check for. It's like a wine. Fifth and sixth is especially common to issues. Other thing is crunches. So when you engage the gearbox, you should do it even do it hard. And if it crunches when it engages a gear, that's a sign you've got a gearbox problem as well. So one to avoid. Crunches in reverse as well. So that's how it should sound. If it crunches in reverse. Um, you'll hear it, it'll be very noticeable. It's a sign you've got a gearbox problem as well. So gearbox problems are very common. Make sure um, the turbo, turbos to check for, maybe look in the history to see if it's been done, injector problems, make sure that the vehicle is idling smoothly um, and check the gearbox, take it on a test drive, make sure there's no crunches or whines in any of the gears. So that's the general things to check for on these vehicles, turbo, injector and gearbox problems. Also, as I've already said, look through the history of the van, make sure it tells a good story, make sure it's got lots of receipts for maintenance and most importantly, check for the HPI report. Check that there's no, um, there's no failures on the on HPI check and definitely avoid buying one if there are. Thanks for this video and if you, uh, if you liked it, enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. There'll be lots of other reviews of other vehicles in the future. Thank you.